you know, people jump into podcasting, entrepreneurialism, religion, people jump into relationships, people jump into things without doing their homework all the way through. And if you do it right, a lot of things get better, a lot of things get easier. Welcome to the Break Free Podcast uh, with your host, David Mancilla. Today we have with us an amazing human being who happens to be an expert in producing podcasts, which is incredible. Paul Culligan, how are you, brother? Better now. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Thank you for being in the show. Um, can we just start uh, maybe where, like your full name, where you live, and we already know that you're a podcaster or a podcast producer, but... Uh, yeah, maybe expand a little yeah, bit on that. Paul Colligan, and um, I've been podcasting since 2004, believe it or not. And um, I'm out of uh, Tigard, Oregon, which is a suburb of Portland in the uh, northwest of the U.S. I always wanted to go to, to that side of the country. I have a couple of friends there, and they say they have amazing, amazing breweries. Yeah. And also it's good for wine tasting and I love beer and I love wine, you know, there we go. <laughs> Welcome home. What got you into podcasting to begin with? Like 2004 for people that are younger than us, 2004, the internet was, yeah, it was taking good shape, but it was still infant times. Right. Yeah. Especially for video and audio. Right. Yeah. Um, the promise of podcasting was what got me into it. Um, when we used to broadcast, you either had to be in a room with a lot of people or you had to be near a tower with a lot of power. Um, you were limited to who you could reach, when you could reach them. If I was going to do a presentation, you know, you had to be in the room Tuesday at seven or you had to be driving to work Thursday at 10 you know, within the range of the tower or in the room where it happens. And this idea that podcasting could make it any place and because it was pre-recorded any time and because it was universal, any device, all the boundaries of communication just died, died overnight. And that was perhaps one of the most exciting things I had ever heard of. And uh, how could I not get into that? That's fantastic. So what was your first experience? Um, I, okay, so go, just looking back, in 2001, I was managing a large development team for a Fortune 500 company that happened to be in the telecommunications industry. And the biggest, largest, most powerful internet connection was an ISDN line, which right now is, I think that was 128K. Yep, yep, <laughs> yep. And now we have gigabits, right? Yep. So, <laughs> How was that experience? Like, you're, like, how did you produce? How, how did you create a podcast in two thousand and four? Well, it was, it was. In many ways, it's the exact same thing we do today, um, except it just took a lot longer. <laughs> Everything <laughs> took a lot longer. But let me give you, let me give you the moment where my mind was blown. So, my mm -hmm. first show, um, I did with my partner, and we were using the show to figure out what podcasting was about. So we'd get together every week and we'd just ask questions. We'd just walk through things. We'd just talk about things. And one of the things I was talking about with my partner was he was in the communication space. He was in the guru space. And you know how nice would it be one day if Apple made it possible for us to give people a preloaded iPod with um, training from an instructor. And we talked about all the problems and all the things that got in the way and all these things. The first podcast event I ever went to was the podcast and portable media expo. A guy walks up to me by the name of Dan Safkow and Dan says, Hey, my name's Dan. And I say, what do you do, Dan? And Dan says, I run a company where we preload media players with content and training from teachers and gurus. Like, Oh my mm. gosh, that's amazing. I said, <laughs> wow, we've been, we've been talking about this on the show for like two years. And he goes, yeah, that's where I got the idea. No way yeah. <laughs> on your show. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. I'm like, wait a minute. You launched a business because Alex and I were getting together once a week to talk about the future. Is that, yeah. 
you know, and that was where I realized the power. It didn't matter what he listened to it on. It didn't matter when he listened to it. It didn't matter what speed he listened to it at. It didn't matter what microphone I was on. It didn't matter what the show notes were. It didn't, what mattered was he heard my message at his Mm -hmm. own timing and changed his life pretty dramatically as a result of it. And that's where I knew, man, this podcast thing, man this podcast thing. And so computers got faster, connections got faster, got easier. You know, the uh, the uh, smartphones made it really easy. You know, it used to be mm-hmm. we, we'd have to take our iPhone or we'd have to take our iPod. We'd have to take a piece of um, software and connect it and then drive that to work. I'll tell you a funny story. In uh, 2000 and it was about six, I think. I can't remember the exact date. I should have written it down. I get in the car with my daughter and we're driving away and I reached for my iPod. It's pre-iPhone. I reached for my iPod to play something. And I go, I left my iPod at home. And my daughter, six years old at the time, you know, says, well, what are we going to do? And I said, well, we're going to listen to radio. And she says, <laughs> you can see where this is going. And she says, what's radio? <laughs> oh, my God. And I'm like, you know what? Yeah, she doesn't know. So then I was trying to, and I kind of knew I'd be talking about this moment for the rest of my life. So I said, well, radio is kind of like the iPod, except someone else chooses what we listen to. Mm -hmm. And she takes that in and she looks at me through the rear view mirror of the car and she goes, well, why would we do that? Mm -hmm. I'm like, dang it. Yeah. Yeah. So since then, I've never let anybody else tell me what I'm watching or what I'm listening to or what I'm learning. I'm in charge. And that's what podcasting has made possible. And um, yeah, it's beautiful. It is, it is beautiful. And, and if you think about it, um, this is your daughter in 2006. Imagine all the new generations after her, right? And what's going to happen is that mainstream media is going to start dying down. And we're going to be- It's already happening, buddy. Like, it's I, already happening. You know, like I cut my cable down in 2011. I said I was paying like crazy, close to 200 bucks a month for watching commercials. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Right. And uh, like a show that should last 20 minutes, it will be an hour. (laughs) There was commercials. I'm like, you know, and I'm I'm always being in the computer industry and I was being on on the Internet. So I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to watch YouTube from now on. And they didn't have YouTube premium back then. Yeah, exactly. Uh, So then. Little by little, because 2011 was still it was still very primitive, but little by little, Netflix showed up, yeah. and now we have like you know so many streaming sources where you can actually get to choose what you want. Yeah, right? what you want, when you want, where you want, and usually without commercials. Yeah, or less without commercials. For less, and it's better, you know, and it's better content because it's niche. It's what we want. Yeah, we win. Actually, I'm probably paying half of what I used to pay, and I have a lot of. It's a streaming media content, yeah. you know, like it's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, let's talk about business. Uh, what were you doing before you got into podcasting business wise? Um, I have always had, and this is my unique ability to use my strategic coach language. I've always had the ability to see how lever- how to leverage existing tech to get people's message out to more people. The web happened. I got it. I got it instantly and I started helping companies put their websites up. And then once the tools to make the websites came into play, I got that. I got that instantly started helping people make websites. And, you know, once YouTube made it popular to get video out there, you know, put stuff on YouTube. And once, once podcasting became mainstream, you know, got that and, and went there, it's always been about what's your message, how to use tech to get it out to more. Mm-hmm. Always. That's been the entirety of my career. That's fantastic. So podcasting started as a hobby or you thought about making it a business? <laughs> right well, on. I wanted to make it business for probably probably 11 years before I was able to make it a business. Um, I, I ended up in 2000, um, I was working a, a great job at the time and the pay and whatnot. I was, I was a consultant downtown Portland. And Audible, the, the electronic book on tape company, they were around at the time. They're not, not as popular as they are now. And um, I was listening to books. Instead of driving to work, listening to drive time radio, I was listening to books. And uh, it wasn't perfect, but it was a lot better than you know listening to drive time radio. And in 2000, mm-hmm. I had a, a chance to have dinner with the CEO of Audible. 
and he gave me a vision for online media and online audio that just just blew my mind and i wanted in right then at the time getting in was going to be a half a million dollars down and they would get 70 percent, and i would get 30 percent. and <laughs> um and harry potter had that same contract so <laughs> i'm not gonna be able to negotiate a better contract than harry potter right and so at the time i walked away kind of you know, kind of down, kind of uh, defeated, kind of um, miserable. And I went back to my consulting job. And then in 2004, um, podcasting came up and it literally was a way for me to be audible. That was how I saw it. It wasn't a nerd thing. It wasn't a, the, the logical extension of the RSS schema, blah, 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 blah. It was, <laughs> I can play audible now. And so I started playing audible. I played audible for some people who were intrigued in it. Um, it got a little weird for a while. So we had to figure out mainstream and the phones had to come into play and Apple had to embrace and that kind of stuff. And I did other consulting things during that time. But, um, you know, once it became profitable and viable, haven't stopped, haven't looked back. And when was that? I, you know, that's funny. Cause I, I probably for, you know, just the last four or five years, I probably forced it mm -hmm. er, er, earlier, you know, let some things go subconsciously to make it happen. But now it's great, you know, mm -hmm. and it's interesting because the industry, it's so easy to get into podcasting, um, to do it, to, you know, to flip the binary switch. Do you have a podcast or not? There's a company called Anchor that got bought by Spotify. You can download the Anchor app. You can podcast, you know, in, in, in five minutes. Um, which unfortunately has resulted in hundreds of thousands of podcasts at Apple that are somebody going, Hey, I just downloaded this app. Is this thing on? Does this work? And they hang up, you know? So just because you have a podcast doesn't mean that you have a business doesn't mean yeah. that you have monetization. You know, there, there are a bunch of companies who will, who will let you pay them. You know, I love companies that let you pay them. Um, you know, there are companies that will let you pay them to find people to talk to on your show. Well, just because you're talking to somebody on your show doesn't mean that there's any money in it. Doesn't mean that there's any strategy into it. So there's there's a lot of noise, and um, what we've done is we've helped people cut through the noise and, and actually see a revenue stream from this really really unique opportunity. So it's easy to get into, but it's not necessarily um, easy to do right. If that makes sense. And you know what you describe most industries. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. if you think about it. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So I, I decided to go on business in 2005. I came from the corporate world and uh, my boss at the time, my last boss at the time, he said, you are crazy. You, you never, you never forget place. your last boss. I know. And he yeah. beautiful soul. He didn't mean bad. Yeah, me, exactly. But, you know, yeah, said, totally. You know, he said, you're crazy. You're living this highly, highly paid job. You have the corner office, all these people under you are doing an amazing job and you know how to delegate. And you're yeah. going to a market just in Toronto at that time, there were 2000 software agencies, 2000. Yeah. And he says, you're going to be 2001 and right. they have right. 10 years more experience than you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, you know, I'm still going to try it and look yeah. at me now. Right. Yep, exactly. Uh, so everything requires an effort. Like if you if you look at your life, when you fell in love with podcasting until you made it profitable, it was a long time. And this is what people need to understand. People are listening to this show. That's why it's called the Break Free Podcast, right? You want to break free into abundance, into the life of your dreams. That doesn't mean it's going to happen automatically. It takes a long time and it takes dedication and effort and it takes passion. Like for you, for example, why did you stay pursuing the podcast avenue? Because you were passionate about it, right? Well, it, it takes, you know, you know, you know, you know to quote, I agree with everything you said, but it takes a few more things, you know, um, um, you know, the seven habits of highly effective people, Covey, you know, his, his thing is, you know, the only worse thing than singing the wrong song is singing it loudly, <laughs> yes. you know, and yes. there are a lot of people singing the wrong song loudly. So it takes everything that you just said, but it also takes, you know, a, a market that people want. Yeah. You know, I had a guy, I, I met a guy. Oh, how do I even begin to describe this? He wanted to do a show about irritable bowel syndrome. What? Yep. <laughs> yep. He wanted to do a seven day a week show about irritable bowel syndrome. 
he wanted to do a seven day a week show about irritable bowel syndrome that was not how to fix it, how to cure it, how to get around it, how to live with it. He wanted to do one where people kind of shared how hard it was. So it was a seven day a week irritable bowel syndrome pity party. <laughs> oh my God. Doesn't matter how much passion he has. Yes. Doesn't matter how hard he works. Doesn't mm -hmm. matter how strategic he is about his irritable bowel syndrome pity party. Not going to happen. Yeah. You know, there's yeah, a, a yeah. there's a, there's a, a, a mall near here, um, near my house, one of the more uppity ones. And um, they opened up the fancy movie theater. And across the street from the movie theater, somebody opened up a gourmet rice pudding store. Gourmet rice pudding. <laughs> I'll say that again. Gourmet rice pudding. Now, you're a happily married man, yes? Yes. How many times have you looked at your spouse and said, hey, let's go out for rice pudding? Never. <laughs> How many times have you woken up in the morning and go, my day will be complete when I have some gourmet rice pudding? Never. <laughs> you know, how many times have you walked out of a movie theater watching a movie, either an independent art film or a science fiction blockbuster, and you said to yourself, mm, mm, rice pudding? Yeah. You know, this company tried hard, and I'm sure the rice pudding was the best rice pudding in Portland, but it died. It died a miserable death. So, so you got to have. All those things you said, but you got to have a market who wants to pay. Yeah. You got to have that too. It's true. And actually more than 75% of businesses, they die within two years. Exactly. More exactly. Than yeah. And it's not businesses an issue of passion. Make, right? They don't die because of passion. Yeah. yeah. No, no, you know, no. It's true. They die very passionately, if anything. But yeah, exactly. 75% die. So the thing is, uh, um, I think what I'm trying to like convey is, what if what if the lesson is not uh the failure itself but being persistent and becoming an entrepreneur right because i've seen people that have five businesses and they all died and then the six or seven business make them makes them a multimillionaire. yeah but they keep trying and switching yeah, and people yeah, yeah and if if it. yeah and i would say what you described go back to that song analogy there are some people who sing song one loudly then they sing song two loudly. Then they sing song three loudly. <laughs> then they sing song four loudly. They get to song five loudly and they win. Boom. Yes. God bless them. Hats off. Right. That's what it's about. Unfortunately, you know, we also know some people who sing song one loudly. And then a couple of months later, they sing song one louder. And then mm -hmm. a month later, they sing song one in a different key. And then a month later, they sing song one with different instruments, you know, mm -hmm. and they don't learn. Yeah. You know, you know, they don't look at the numbers, you know, they, they don't look at the process. And there are a lot of people who it's very sexy to call yourself an entrepreneur right now. But in insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. Exactly. As long as there's change, as long as there's numbers, as long as there's tracking, as long as there's metrics, as long as there's something, then we can get better. But if we just think it's trying so hard until we get it right, it's not enough. You know, you are so right. So my boss told me the one thing. He said, the worst, the, the, the best thing that it could happen to you is go bankrupt right away. Yeah. The worst thing that it could happen to you is being mediocre for the rest of your life. Yeah. And then he says, and the best thing that could happen to you is you become successful. So I tell my wife this, uh, if I had to go into business, I had to have her support to pay the mortgage and everything else. Yep, well, yep, I was doing yep, no yep, money, yep, right? Yep. Like any new business. So she said, I'll give you five years. Okay. And she said, if you cannot hire me back into the business in five years or retire me in five years, your ass is back into a corporate job. Fair. <laughs> and it worked. Because yeah. that got me to the point that I was above you know, mediocrity. So because most most people, okay, they actually make some time some type of income, yeah. and maybe it's half of what they used to make in their job. Yeah. But they are surviving, right? And and they get used to surviving. And yeah. 
and they become is they are called zombie companies, right? They they yeah. are just zombies, right? Yeah. So thanks to my old boss and my wife, I I had enough, you know, <laughs> back burners to lift me up, yeah. right? And do the right pivoting. I pivoted like five times. Yeah. Right. Until I found my niche. <laughs> yeah. But you had that metric. You had that number. You know. And um. And yeah. the goal. The goal yeah. And, and, the that, metric, yeah right? and the goal. You know. I mean, I know a guy who gets paid incredibly well for the 90 minutes a week of his job <laughs> you know exactly <laughs> it's not enough <laughs> you know right and um you know and he fills the rest of the week with you know singing the wrong song you know very loudly and mm -hmm. um yeah yeah failing quickly helps sometimes you know uh, i'm zero revenue at the end of the month you know you know having somebody go hey we're foreclosing on your house you know, you know, that, that'll, that'll move you to action, you know, you know, just giving the bank enough to keep, keep it open. That can be a mess, but yeah. Yeah. So it's that combination and it's great, you know, and that countdown, your wife, that five-year thing, that that's fantastic. You know, she probably thought she was being lenient and kind and, 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 you know, probably, you know, just incredibly strategic because now, you know, by, you know, 365 days times five, you have to make this number. Now it's yeah. a spreadsheet issue. Now it's a math issue. Exactly. Yeah. And, and it doesn't matter how I get there. Yeah, exactly. As as and don't so break the me, law. Yeah. <laughs> so podcasting, you know, I knew, I knew podcasting was going to be my future. I mean, I knew the internet was going to be my future about four minutes after I logged into the internet. You know, and this was pre-web. This was pre-web. I have a book over my bookshelf called The Beginner's Guide to the Internet. It's like this thick and it has, <laughs> it has a whole page, a whole page dedicated to this thing coming called the web. You know, I knew the internet, one page to this thing coming called the web. Uh -huh. And um, I knew the web was gonna be part of my, I knew the internet was gonna be part of my future forever. I knew podcasts could be part of my future forever. I didn't necessarily know how I was gonna pay the bills between now and then, you know? And so, you know, I paid the bills in, in whatever made, way made sense as I sorted through this process. You know, you know, I, I never stopped podcasting for the day I did the first one, but you know, there was a good 10 years where I wasn't making more than four or 500 bucks a month in it. So, you know, I had to do something else to, to pay the bills while, while the industry caught up with me, I guess would be the, you know, but yeah, yeah. You got to have that number. You got to have that line. You got to have that necessity. You got to have, you know, the, 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 the burning of the ships, you know, you got to have the point of no return. Um, you got to have all those things. Definitely. And, uh, Talking about the internet, what do you think this is going to? What's the next evolution of the internet? Well, so uh, a friend of mine, Tom Webster, Edison Research, um, he has a line that is just perfect. And the line is this, you know, the internet has never been good to the middleman. Mm -hmm. You know, internet's been very good to Amazon. Internet's been very good to book readers. Amazon, you know, the internet has not been very good to the local bookstore. Mm -hmm. You know, the internet has been very good to television state, uh, you know, ha has the internet has been very good to television watchers. The internet mm -hmm. has been very good to television makers. The internet has not been very good to local channel eight. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yes. And so, so the internet kills the middleman and the internet's going to kill the middleman in every way, shape and form. Um, Podcasting is the internet killing the middleman in audio and video. Mm -hmm. You know, um, the internet's going to kill the middleman in finance. We're already seeing that with crypto. You know, here's my, you know, here's my Bitcoin prop. Um, nice. <laughs> you know, the bank is going to stop. You know, right now, my bank's doing okay on the internet because they've been able to convince enough people that they're still necessary. But, um, you, know, you know, the bank is going to go away. Decentralized finance will make that happen. Um, right now, a lot of restaurants, you know, I've been amazed watching COVID. We're recording this in, in January of 2022. And, um, you know, COVID was interesting because some restaurants died about a week into COVID. And mm -hmm. some restaurants were able to figure out how to become delivery companies. Yeah. You know, I and one of our food, favorite, eh? and one of our favorite order, one of our favorite delivery, you know, restaurants in town isn't using Grubhub you know, isn't using, you know, diner, you know, any of these options, because just the margins and restaurant isn't enough. So they quickly built their own way to order remotely. And 
I have plenty of their boxes in my garbage today, you know, you know, because, because it works. So, so anything that, that the internet's future is anything that shortens the distance between me and what it is that I want to accomplish money, travel, finances, physical goods, virtual goods, food, drink, all that, you know, so, so podcasting, it's so easy. You know, I, um, I, um, you know, your podcast, it's, it's easier to listen to a podcast in some countries than it is to go on Facebook. You Better know, there way. are countries I've got, I've got a client with, you know, hundreds of downloads a month in a country where YouTube's illegal. Wow. You know, the internet's <laughs> never, yeah, the internet's never been good to the middleman. So all, all elements of the internet are what happens when the little guy, you know, you know when the middleman gets away, what does my audience want from me? How can I get it to them as quickly and easily as is possible? And the internet will just make that happen because we're all connected. I mean, look, man, you and I, you've been in this long enough. Did you ever think there'd be a world where you could click a button and you and I'd be talking to each other in high def? You know, I, I, it's insane what's happened, you know, and the middleman, you know, internet's made it very easy for you and me to talk. The internet's made it very hard for me to, um, you know, consider giving the airline companies some money for us to fly out and meet. You know, and the thing is right now we're recording this on Zoom. Why? Because Zoom's the one that works. Second, something comes up better than Zoom, you and I are switching. Yeah. Yeah, it's not complicated. In a heartbeat. In a yeah, heartbeat. In a heart, right? Yeah, in a heartbeat. It's amazing. Like, you know, I remember the first time I I did a remote session uh, that was in 1999. There was a little tiny program that you could install and go through the internet with that low bandwidth and you could actually take control over the mouse and keyboard of the remote machine. And I started doing that to freak people up. Like I was like, like they were like, holy shit, my computer is, you know, my computer is, uh, is haunted. <laughs> and, you know, it was very primitive. And, and I, I, that's, that's when I thought this is just going to grow exponentially. When I started my business, one of the premises that I said was my people doesn't have to come to the office to work. Yeah, Because exactly. we're all developers. Yeah. We're all engineers, developers, project managers. Yeah. Why would I waste two hours to go to an office? Yeah. Right. To build something on the internet. It, yeah. made, it made no sense to me. Yeah. Right. And, and a, why would you waste that? That's a, and, 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 and that's true, you know, and, and it's, it's so funny because uh, I actually have a dear friend of mine who, um, he was a teacher. COVID changed all that. He got out of the public school system and he needed to, he's now working for a company remotely. And it's funny because we had beers last week and he just had this look on his face and he's like, Paul, I haven't commuted in two weeks. <laughs> you haven't commuted in two decades, have you? <laughs> you know, and I'm like, awakening. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, nope, nope. And he goes, you have more life than I do, don't you? I'm like, yeah. yeah. You know, and, and, and he said, yeah, I don't think I'm ever going to get in the car for work again. You know, so there's that part. But the other part is it used to be. If you wanted an employee, you could only hire from the vicinity of however many miles somebody will willing to drive now that they can be anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. Now you have the whole world to access for your talent bank. Yeah. You know, great. I had a I had a a designer that I found um, out of Bosnia. Um, he knew my groove. He, he liked me. I liked him. I liked his work. People have seen the work that he did for me. They're like, oh, that's amazing. Where did you do that? And this is this guy out of Bosnia. You know, and what was amazing was a, a friend of mine, actually a missionary, was heading to Bosnia. And you know, he was going to go to the same town. And I said, well, why don't you bring by some like cookies and treats to the, to the office where these guys are and just surprise them, you know? And I think the cookies and treats like cost like four bucks, you know, or something. And, it, and, and, and it fed everybody for the week. You, you know, it was just, it's just, it's just crazy how much the internet kills the middleman. 
So now mm-hmm. I've got this this group from you know, and I'm not. This is not a Bosnian sweatshop that's doing my 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 graphic work. This is a bunch of Bosnian guys who are making some of the best money you know in their town, living a great life, because I'm no longer limited to Portland for my graphic designer. Of course, it's it's incredible, and it's, so the globalization just keeps growing and growing and growing. Yeah, right? yeah. It's, it's it's breaking limiting limiting beliefs and yeah. limiting of ge- geographical limits, right? Yeah. It's, it's, it's just amazing. Yeah. A lot of people are, are, are there still, you know, it's funny because I started this culture, this remote culture in 2005. We were more than ready for COVID, by the way, because we were COVID ready since the beginning. But because I was raised in the corporate world, I still have this need to go to another place to do my business. Yeah. So I still have a, a, an office, but instead of getting a corporate office, I bought a bungalow and I turned the house into a full office. So it still feels like a house, but it's separate from my my wife and my kids and all yeah. that, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And what's interesting, people like you and I, we we've known this for a while. You, you know, it's funny. I'm in in a couple of weeks. I'm heading out to a Joe Polish event, and um, I love Joe. And Joe was one of the first podcasts I ever did. And um, Joe's one of the best guys on the planet. I, I I truly think he'd take a bullet for me. You know, he's just one of, one of the best people I know. And, and it's funny because Joe would have his live event and Joe would pay good money to have, you, you know, fifty sixty thousand dollars $60,000 to have a, a media company come in and produce this amazing live event. And it was worth it because he got the tickets and he made his money. But then he'd hold up his cell phone and he'd go to Facebook Live and he'd broadcast that with his shaky hand, you know? Mm-hmm. And so people were comparing the at event, at an amazing hotel, handled by these professionals, to the shaky hand. And the shaky hand sucked. But the second they took that professionalism to the remote event, then it got good. See, the problem was a lot of people weren't ready for remote. So when they did their first remote, they were in a really bad place. The second they could do remote well, then it clicked. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I moved, when I moved to Portland, okay, so I moved to Portland in 93. I was working for a consulting, right? Yeah, 93, fall of 93. I, I was working for a consulting company. No, fall of 94. I was working for a consult, uh, um, a company down in Santa Barbara. And I was moving to Portland, knew I had to move to Portland, didn't know what I was going to do in Portland, but knew I had to move to Portland. And this is pre-internet, this is pre-everything. Um, and... I told my old boss, he said, too bad you can't work for me from Portland. I'm like, well, why can't I? He goes, well, how are you going to get to the office? I don't need to get to the office. So we bought a modem, hooked up to the computer, put the computer underneath the desk because they were worried somebody would use it. And I would log in at night, you know, on their 1-800 line, you know, and I would work 2,400 baud modem remotely. Um, in a million years, nobody at that company could figure out how I was working remotely. <laughs> you know, but they saw the emails, they saw the output, they saw the work, they saw everything. And so they didn't question it. Now, you know, fast forward post COVID where everybody goes home by Zoom and everybody works remotely. So part of it is there's the capacity, mm-hmm. but then there's also the embracing of the capacity. I've been telling my buddy for two decades that I was working at home. He didn't understand what it was until he did it himself. Right. You know, and so that's where a lot of companies are. So a lot of companies are, um, you know, they can't wait to get back to the old ways as opposed to just embracing what these new ways have made possible for us. Mm-hmm. You know, I know a lot of speakers, you know, I know a lot of people who are podcasting now because they can't get in front of an audience. You know, uh, there are a lot of people who, who should be podcasting now because podcasting is the best thing for them to do. Mm-hmm. It's incredible. Yeah. I, so my, my show is all about contribution. So it's just giving back. Um, but at the same time, it has opened so many doors for me. Yeah. And and the lessons that I'm that I'm getting from the people that I'm interviewing is incredible. It's like I always tell like like my my guests, like I am the first one that gets blessed just by your knowledge. It's in, it's in, unbelievable, you know. And then everybody else that gets to listen to this is is podcasting is amazing. <laughs> yep. Now tell me something. Um, there is a lot of noise out there right? Yep. <laughs> what would you recommend for entrepreneurs that want to get into podcasting? How will they go about to doing it? Um, because I know I made a lot of mistakes. I still making mistakes. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks yeah, by yeah, the way yeah, for yeah. all the advice that I got in from you, but like, it's I no, 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 a great question. I'll give was, you a real, a real simple, yeah. 
real simple process. Mm -hmm. Get yourself a piece of paper, draw a line down the middle of the piece of paper, up and down, draw a line down the piece of paper, right and left. So your piece of paper is four quart, four quadrants. All right. Mm -hmm. Quadrant number one is what do you want the podcast to do? Mm -hmm. See, a lot of people don't know that. Well, I'm going to interview people about interesting things because that's what other people do on podcasts. No, that's not it. What do you want the podcast to do? You know, now, um, if the thing is, I want to use the podcast to open the door to talk to interesting people, great. You know, but what do you want the podcast to do? I want the podcast to generate more business for my company. Great. I want the podcast to make the phone ring. Great. I want the podcast to sell my book. Great. I want the podcast to be so popular that other people advertise on my podcast. Great. Great. Whatever. What do you want the podcast to do? Quadrant one. That's the first step. Um, quadrant two. How will you know that the podcast is doing it? Mm -hmm. You know, let me give you an example. A client calls and says, I want you to make the phone ring. And great. We can design a show that makes the phone ring. But here's my question. Phone rings. Will you know that it's the podcast that's making the phone ring? Or are you going right for the sale? The man, phone rings, Paul. I'm going right for the sale. Okay, here's the problem. You know, how, what do you want the podcast to do? Make the phone ring. How we know the podcast is doing it? I don't know. Here's the funny thing. Simple solution. We sent him a cell phone. Mm -hmm. The phone number on the podcast is the cell phone. The phone number everywhere else is his landline. Mm -hmm. Put the cell phone next to the landline. Every time the cell phone rings, it's the podcast. Every time the landline Easy. rings, it's everything else. <laughs> Easy. You know, so number one, what do you want the podcast to do? Number two, how you know the podcast is doing it. If you don't know how to know if the podcast is doing it, go back to square one. Like mm -hmm. you got to have something you can track. You got to have yeah. something you can track. And I don't care what you're tracking. I don't care what the metric is. I, I, but you got to have something that you can track. You know, it's funny. I was, on, I was on a Zoom call with a gentleman, big name, his assistant. She was taking notes. His director of content, her assistant, the director of content's assistant, taking notes. The director of marketing and the director of marketing's assistant taking notes. So there's six people on the Zoom call on their side and me. And I ask, what's, what, what's your strategy for the podcast? What are you trying to do? And he gave me absolute clarity. Absolute clarity as if grandma had needle pointed it on a pillow that he slept on every night. I mean, he knew, he knew exactly, exactly. what he was trying to do. It's gorgeous. And seven and a half million downloads. So then I asked him the second question. How's that working for you? He goes, I don't know. You know, there's no. that old adage that half my marketing money is working. I just don't know which half. Exactly. You know? <laughs> you know? And so um, quadrant one, what do you want the podcast to do? Number two, how we know the podcast is doing it. You have to answer those two questions before you buy a microphone and record anything. Quadrant three, is the podcast doing it? Mm -hmm. you know that's binary you know did that cell phone ring and it wasn't a wrong number or a spam call you know mm -hmm. now you know if it worked or not and then if the podcast is doing it quadrant three quadrant four is how do we do it better that's it that's every entrepreneur's constant guide to podcasting constant improvement it's yeah. beautiful and simple yeah you know but everybody think it's like well i have to have a topic no 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 no, no. what do you want the podcast to do first you know, now, obviously, if it's about your business, the topic has to be something about your business or else it'll never happen, you know? And um, there, there's a company, it's absolutely funny. There's a company that I, I mean, how it is with software. There, there's certain software that you just have like a special place in your heart for. You know, there's certain software that has just made life easier. That is, you know, there's the, there's the software you have to put up with. And then there's the software that you just think of and you have a smile on your face. So there's a company where I, have a smile on my face associated with this company. Their podcast has nothing to do with their topic. 
Their podcast has nothing to do with their service. Their podcast has nothing to do with anything about what they're about. How many times have I listened to that podcast? Never. <laughs> yeah, zero, zero, you know? But and I don't, I, don't want to them, I don't want to throw them shade by giving the name, but, but, but it's, it's it, you know, and it's just so sad because, you know, they're, they're not connecting those dots. Connect the dots. And it's funny because if actually what you say could be applied also to any business, for example. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. Manage, nothing unique to me. Right? To me. But yeah. you can never manage what you cannot measure. But yeah. you, you know, the funny part is that the simplest the idea, the less people apply it because they just take it for granted. Yeah. And then it's just failure after failure after failure. Yeah. yeah this, exactly. By the way, I never heard about this for quadrant. It's beautiful. Thank you so much. Yeah. This is amazing. Yeah. And it's and simple. It, and that's it. <laughs> you know, at some point, you know, if we if we go all down Sullivan, who not how, you know, personally, I would say quadrant one. You know what your company is. You know what you're doing. I don't know if you need a who for something like that. Mm -hmm. You know, at least in the initial stages, you might need a who to run it by. Is this logical? Does this make sense? That kind of thing. But that that quadrant one, that's a that's a glass of red wine or a cup of good coffee and a pen and a piece of paper. I mean, it's not that complicated. You know, quadrant two, how will I know that it's doing it? You know, it depends on your business acumen. You, you might need a who to help you figure out how to track it, how to do things, that kind of thing. You know, number three, is it doing it? That's where I would dare say, I mean, you know, we spoke earlier before we started recording to your producer, you know, there comes a point where you hand things over to someone, you know, to, to make things happen and probably in quadrant three, you know, maybe quadrant four. But yeah, this is a real entry, piece of paper, a pen and a cup of good coffee. Fantastic. Life's too short for bad coffee. I know. <laughs> um, what's, the, what, what's in the future for you? This was your very future. This, this is it. Distributed media, distributed media with the middleman gone. Might not be called podcast for a while, but you and I remember, you and I remember back in the old days when it wasn't email, it was pop three, you know, nobody yeah. calls it pop, <laughs> right? Right. Then it went to IMAP. Yeah. You yes. know, and um, you know, now we just call it email. So, I mean, will it be called podcast in five years? I have no idea. Um, will it be called podcast in 10 years? Probably not, but it'll be mm -hmm. distributed media, you know, with, with no middleman. And, and that, that's my future. Um, um, whatever it looks like going with the flow, you know, I've got my, um, you know, I'm showing you this in the video. This is my 3d, you, you know, this is my VR helmet. If it goes here, I'm ready. You know, um, if it goes under different planets, I'm ready, but it will yeah. be getting the media from the creator to the consumer with nothing in the middle. That's my future. It's, it's so funny that you mentioned that because I think the metaverse is the next evolution of the internet and it's all about the 3d experience. Yeah. Um, and we're just tapping into it. And so we have a skunk works section in our, in, in our business where we Good. try new ideas and see what happens, right? Yeah. So I have this little meditation group where I teach people how to meditate. And I thought, I wondered if I could, instead of getting them to imagine what I'm saying, what if we make a 3D app on the metaverse? So they just put their goggles and, and I, you know, I can still guide the meditation, but they can see what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. So we're totally. beginning to do that. Yeah. Incredible, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but the fun thing is using your analogy, how can you use the tech to help them meditate better? Yeah. The tool. Bingo. The tech is just a tool. Yeah, right? exactly. So how can I use the tech to help people get their message out to more people with less interference in the middle? Mm -hmm. That's it. Incredible. Incredible. Brother, thank you. Thank you so much for your time. I know that uh, you're a super busy guy, and I know you do, you have the right hooks because you're just like me. But I, I want to make sure that I'm, I'm not abusing it. No, I appreciate sense. that. Um, I appreciate that. One last. And it question. is a crazy one day. last question. <laughs> <laughs> one last question, brother. If you had access to a billboard in the busiest highway on earth, what would you write in it? Take the time to do it right. Take the time to do it right. Don't rush it. Yeah. You know, if it's fast, you know, if it's only 30 seconds worth of work, do it in 30 seconds. I'm all for that, but just do it right. Mm -hmm. You know, people jump into podcasting, would not right. People jump into entrepreneurialism, you know, not right. You know, people jump into religion, people jump into relationships, people jump into 
governments, people jump into, uh, you know, feelings about vaccines, people jump into things without doing their homework all the way through. And if you do it right, and you take the time to do it, and we're in this rush society, it is a billboard, we're driving by at 100 miles an hour. You know, um, if we take the time to do it right, a lot of things get better, a lot of things get easier. That is incredible knowledge. Thank you so much. Brother, thank you so much for your time, for your wisdom. People want to find you so that they can hire your company to do their podcast. Where, where can they find you? Uh, best is podcastpartnership.com. Podcastpartnership.com. Yep. Awesome. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful rest of the weekend, I guess. And yep. um, I'll see you around. And thank you for, for being here. Thank you for having me. That's all for today's episode of the Break Free Podcast. Head on over to iTunes and subscribe to the show. Starting your own business can be tough, but it doesn't have to be. Visit davidmansilla.com to pick up a copy of the number one international best-selling book, Breaking Out of Corporate Jail. Expand what you consider to be possible and reach your full potential. And join us on the next episode.